Hey friend, Brandon here. It's that time again, and maybe you or a friend just got your hands on this Samsung Galaxy S20, the S20 Plus, or S20 Ultra. And perhaps you're trying to find some actual tips and tricks for your phone, and you've gone through like three videos already, and you really haven't learned anything new. Well, this might be the video for you. Here are my top 20 plus Samsung Galaxy S20, S20 Plus, and S20 Ultra tips, tricks, hidden and advanced features, which are really great for your iPhone switchers or those who are not as advanced at Android. Of course, if there are any tips and tricks that I haven't mentioned in this video that you really like, go ahead and leave some comments and help each other out. It's time for me to help you wield the power of the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, because this is Tech Today. If you haven't already, please share, subscribe, hit that bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. There are more videos coming out for the Samsung Galaxy S20 and other things tech, including a big giveaway in an upcoming video that you don't want to miss out. So make sure you have the notification bell clicked. And if you haven't picked up the Samsung Galaxy S20 or any accessories yet, there's a link down below in the description to get 5% off the Samsung store. So make sure you use that link anytime you go to the Samsung store to save some money. Okay, so tip number one may be a little bit scary for some of those who aren't as nerdy as I am or some hardcore Android fans, but I promise this is a game changer. It's what I do on every single device once I get it. And I know what some of you are probably thinking, that's available in the stock settings already, and that's true, but the version that I'm going to show you is even better. So let me show you the stock option and then the option that I want to show you that's even better. So let's go to the gear icon in this top right corner and go down to advanced features, and then you'll go to reduce animations, and that will make things go a bit faster. Let's turn it off just to see it. So yeah, it's, it's going faster. Yeah, there's there's a difference, but it's still not as good as this. So let's go so let's go all the way down to about phone and then click on software information and then click on build number until it asks you for your pin. So you'll type in your own pin number. This is what you set up when you set up your device. We don't have the same thing. I can't tell you what it is. So developer mode has been turned on. So go back and then go back again and then you'll see this option at the very bottom called developer options. So what you'll want to do is scroll down quite a bit until you see the animations and window animation scale. So right now we're at 1x. Let me show you what that looks like. See how it's changing there. I'm going to change this to 0.5. That's my favorite. Oops, I did that one. And see how it's way faster? And remember, we turned on the stock faster animations option. And it's still this is like way faster. So this is my favorite setting. It makes it really super snappy and it's really going to complement uh, another tip later on that we'll go over. Now with these really big phones, it can be really hard to reach the top of the notification shade, especially if you're one handed. You kind of have to use your other hand to do that. Well, there's an option to make that a little bit easier to access. So if you hold down on the home screen and you go to home screen settings in the bottom right, there's an option for swipe down for notification panel. So normally it would open up your app drawer, which you can do by swiping up, but it would do that normally if you swipe down. But now you can just swipe down and now you have your notification shade. So instead of it being all redundant, you have two options, swipe down for notifications, swipe up for your apps. Tip number three is important for me. Oh, I'm rhyming on accident. When I like to see a lot of things on my screen. So if I click on the gear icon again, I'll go to display and then there is font size and style. So you can change your font style if you want to. I, I don't really prefer that myself, but I like to see a lot of things on my screen at once. So I like to make it really small, but if you uh, maybe need to have bigger text or maybe you're helping out um, a parent or a grandparent and you need it really big, you can do that. But I like to go all the way down. And because I like seeing as much as possible on my screen at once, I'll go to screen zoom. You can zoom in if you want to, but I'll move it back to the smallest you can. Uh, unfortunately, you can't make it even smaller than this. If you look at something like the Google Pixel, you can actually make the font even smaller and zoom out even more, which is what I prefer. But this is the most you can get out of a Galaxy device. Now, while we're here, let's talk about the resolution and screen speed. So if we go up here, we'll see the screen resolution. So the default setting for your phone is full HD, uh, but you can go up to QHD if you want to. I won't enable that for this because of my screen recorder and it'll mess with that, but that is an option. But one thing about that, if you go back 
and you go up to motion smoothness, which is one of the really awesome features of the S20 series, is the 120 hertz refresh rate, which makes it feel really, really, really snappy and smooth. The downside of that is that it's only available in full HD, so it's not available at the highest resolution. And there's a trade-off there. And of course, 120 hertz will affect your battery. So maybe 120 hertz doesn't make a huge difference for you. It makes a difference for me, but if it doesn't, you can stay at 60 hertz and go for the highest resolution possible. Tip number five, since we're also here, we'll go all the way up and then we'll go to dark mode. This is a really great option uh, if you like to have less strain on your eyes or you don't want it to blind you when you open up your phone right before you go to bed. And you shouldn't do that, you know that. And that's really great for AMOLED screens. When the pixels are black, they're not on, thus saving you battery. Another thing that's really great about this phone is the camera, but there's a little quirk in there that you just have to know about. So let's open up the camera app can see me right there. Now it defaults to the three by four aspect ratio, but that 108 megapixel camera is not enabled by default. You actually have to go into your aspect ratio and then enable the 108 megapixel camera. Now keep in mind that file sizes are gonna be way bigger when you use that. And they're really more of a benefit if you're printing out your photos for like a poster. Now as of March 4th, when I'm filming this, an interesting thing comes up. I've noticed that the normal camera, not the 108 megapixel camera, but the normal camera is actually sharper. When you zoom in, you can see it's a little bit blurrier. It's kind of odd, right? I don't know if they're just sharpening it in software or if it's actually just sharper for some reason. Since we're here, let's talk about tip number seven. Go ahead and click on the gear icon in the top left corner and then go all the way down to shooting methods. Now, this is where volume key comes into play. You can either choose to just take a normal picture as if it's a shutter button. You can use it for system volume, so it's kind of like your volume keys have nothing to do with your camera, or you can use zoom, which is something that I really like. So that allows me to just use it to zoom in and out, it's pretty sweet. Tip number eight is really great and it's something really unique to the Samsung Galaxy S20 series. Now, when you move between apps, you'll often find that it refreshes when you reopen it. This is something that you find that's really common with like music apps like this right now, it's just reloaded right now, or creative apps like video editors. Now, one thing you can do, if you can go to your overview screen, if you click on the little icon for the app that you're looking in, you can keep it open for quick launching. What it's doing is it's using all that RAM that's available in your phone to hold it there so that when you go back to it, it doesn't refresh. That makes so much sense, especially because you can go up to 16 gigabytes of RAM depending on what model S20 you have. Also, if you're wondering why my Galaxy S20 Ultra looks different, I have this sweet matrix skin from our channel sponsor, Dbrand. Strangely, the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra has some of the most boring color options out there. So you'll probably want to do something about that with one of the many options they have for skins to fit your style and make it less of a fingerprint magnet. They even have a really awesome Dbrand grip case to prevent it from damage when you drop it because, you know, you're probably well. <laughs> I have the limited edition robot camo in this one. There's a link in the description if you wanna pick any of those up. All right, tip number nine is really helpful if you go to your notification shade and look at settings often. If you've noticed, every single time we have to swipe down on a notification shade, we have to do it twice in order to get to these quick settings. One way you can make that easy to get right to it is use both your fingers, not one. So two fingers swipe down right there. All right, tip number 10 is really great if you uh, are watching something while you're in bed and you're, and you're laying down and you don't want your screen rotating on you all the time. So as long as you have your rotation lock turned on so it doesn't rotate on you, you can actually choose when you want it to actually rotate. So if you just rotate your phone, you'll see this little icon show up in the bottom. And then now it rotates for you manually. And then likewise, turn portrait mode and hit it and it goes back. So keep in mind, you have to have your rotation lock turned on. Number 11 is really great because you have this really, really big screen and you wanna maximize it, you wanna use all of it, right? So if you hit your app overview, so you just click on the app icon up here and then open in split screen view. And then now you choose the other app that you wanna to have to share. So I have both YouTube up here and then YouTube music down below. And you can rearrange it however you want. And if you wanna exit, you just swipe all the way down. And that's it. Number 12 is really neat. So let's go to your settings. Let's click on that little gear icon again. And then let's just make it easy. Let's hit search and type in smart pop up view. So we'll go over here and we'll click on it. So smart pop up view is kind of like Facebook Messenger, except with different types of apps. So it shows up as a little bubble that you can move around on your screen and quickly access it. So you can choose that for different messaging apps that you have, or maybe specific apps that you want to look at. So I'm going to turn on YouTube music and then maybe the calculator because maybe you're, you're trying to do your taxes or something. <laughs> 
Okay, so we've opened up the calculator. Let's go to the app overview screen and then click on the app icon and then you can open up and pop up view. And so you can rearrange it so it'll hover over something else. So this is like really great if you are actually doing your taxes. Um, and then you can hit this button to change its opacity. You can condense it so it shows up in this little bubble that I was talking about, kind of like Facebook Messenger. It has that nice little bounce. And then you can just click on it and reaccess it. And then if you want to, you can close it by clicking the X or hit the expand view to get to the full screen view. All right, this next one, let's go to the settings again. Let's hit the gear icon and type in pin and then windows, pin windows right here. And we'll enable pin windows. Now this is really great if you happen to have maybe kids or you're letting someone just use your phone to make a phone call and you don't want them snooping around throughout the rest of your phone. So if you hit the app overview screen, hit the app icon there, and then you can choose pin this app. So it'll show you some instructions on how to exit the app. But what you'll see is I'm hitting the home button, I'm hitting back, I'm hitting all these different things, but I cannot exit the settings screen because I've limited it to just this app. And then of course, if you exit it, you hold both of them down, it asks for your login credentials, and then now, it works just like normal. Tip number 14 is really cool because it's a new feature that has started with the Galaxy S20 series. This one's essentially the Apple AirDrop just for Samsung phones. So we're gonna go to the gallery app, for instance, and choose this image right here. And now if you hit the share button, there is an option for quick share. Now this works currently just for other Samsung devices, but if you have another Samsung device available, you can actually send files to the other Samsung device, kind of like AirDrop. You can do this with up to five different devices. So you see the Galaxy Note is right there. I click on it and then my Galaxy Note will show this file request receive option. I hit accept and then it'll send me the file. And it just shows up as a downloaded file there. And there it is. Pretty sweet. Now remember, that just works on Samsung devices for now. Number 15 is really great if you like to get things done real quick. So if you just double tap on the app icon, the app overview one, you can switch between your apps super fast. And since we're talking about that navigation bar, let's talk about tip number 16. We'll go to the settings and then we'll type in search navigation and we'll choose navigation bar. All right, so let's click on that one down there. So if you've used other Android devices, you might be a bit confused by how Samsung has the app overview and back buttons swapped. You can change that if you'd like to, but you can also utilize gestures. And that one's really neat. There are two options that you have available. There's the one that is the more Samsung version of it, which it has three different lines at the bottom and it kind of mimics having those three different button layouts anyways. Or you can use the one that Google has set up and it it has one single bar down there that does a lot and there's a swipe back option from the edges of the screen, which is kind of like an iPhone. So if I wanna to go to that app overview screen, I just drag up until you feel it kind of vibrate a little bit and it goes to this card view. You can move between things and close them if you want and you can swipe along the bottom to go through your cards as well. Now, if you wanna do that fast app switcher thing, all you do is swipe right and swipe left and you can move through them just like that. It's really great. Tip number 17 is another thing that's really helpful when you have this big screen. So let's go into your settings again and let's type in search one handed mode and then we'll enable it right here and then turn it on. So the one that I've chosen, you just swipe down on where the home button would be. And then you go into the small little version of it and you can navigate it just like normal. Uh, you can swipe through it, it's a little bit easier because uh, you don't have to reach to the top and you can move it around on the left side or the right side with this little arrow here. And if you wanna exit out of this view, just click on the black area and it goes full screen again. Number 18 is really helpful if you happen to have multiple social media accounts, maybe you do social media marketing or you have multiple messaging services that you wanna use. This one's called Dual Messenger. And there, you can just enable it. And you can have multiple Telegram accounts, for instance, which is really helpful there, or Facebook accounts. And you just enable it, and then it allows you to log in again. So it's essentially creating duplicate apps with different logins. Now, number 19 is something I can't actually physically show you because I don't have another Samsung Galaxy S20 device I had to buy on my own. But there's an option called music share, which is really neat. So essentially what's happening when you have music share on is that you connect this phone to a Bluetooth speaker. Now, when you enable music share, you're able to have another person connect their phone to your phone 
that is connected to the speaker. So essentially you're kind of the in-between and you can both control that Bluetooth speaker. So that's really great if you're at a party and you both wanna kinda of contribute towards what music you're listening to. Tip number 20 is quite mind blowing. Maybe you're watching a YouTube video or a podcast and uh, you can't really listen to it. You just kinda of need to read it. Well, if you hit the volume button and you click on the down carrot, you'll see this option that says live caption. And then what will happen is you have this box right here that is transcribing what is happening in the video live on your phone natively. You don't even have to be connected to the internet for it to work. It's kind of incredible. And if you wanna get rid of this, you can either go up to the volume button again and turn it off, or you just drag it down and turn it off that way. Number 21 is one that just kind of seems crazy that we even have to have it. But I mean, when you turn off your phone, what's the thing that you instinctively do? You hold down the power button. But you know what happens when you hold down the power button? You get Bigsby instead. Well, let's change that so it works the way it's supposed to be. So let's go to your settings. Let's go to advanced features and then side, side key. key. Now this one, you can either wake Bigsby or go to the power off menu, which is uh, what I would choose. Also, while you're here, there's the option for double press. You can either launch the camera, which is what I prefer, or open an app. You can choose which one you want, which is also really cool. So now I hold down the power button and it works as it should. Tip number 22 is really crazy and one that surprisingly not a lot of people know, but if you wanna take a screenshot and you don't wanna do this whole crazy button thing, just get your palm and just swipe across and it takes a screenshot like that. You just, I just did it with my palm like that. It's so helpful and something I really wish would happen on Google Pixel devices. Tip number 23 is really helpful if you have some bloatware on your phone or just some apps that you just don't really use and you don't wanna see anymore. So if you hold down on the home screen, there's a home screen settings and this option at the bottom says hide apps. Yeah, so maybe you don't need the smart switch app anymore. You can just click on that and it's hidden. And whenever you go to the app drawer, you won't see that anymore. So it can kind of declutter everything on your phone. Really helpful. Tip number 24 is really great for security. So if you go to settings and we'll search for a lockdown mode. So it'll ask for your pin. Once again, this is the pin that you have chosen. So that's what you put in when you initially set up your device. And then let's check on show lockdown option. Now, if you hold down your power button and it works as it should, uh, otherwise, you know, it's, it's up here if you really wanna use it. But uh, if, you, if it works as it should, you just hold it down and turn on lockdown mode. So what's happening here is it's turning off biometric authentication. You don't have the face unlock. You don't have fingerprint unlock. You only have your pin, your password, or the pattern that you set up. That is the only way that you can get in. Tip number five goes along with that security. If you go to your settings and you type in SOS, you can do send SOS message and you can turn it on here. When you turn it on, there are some agreements that you have to choose and then add someone as a recipient. So I added my friend Caleb, who was also in a video where we looked at the AirPods Pro as two professional audio engineers. You can check it out up here. So I've added them there. And then what happens is if you click on the side key three times quickly, it'll attach pictures using the front and back camera and a five second audio recorder to whoever I've chosen. I hope you never have to use it, but probably not a bad idea to set up just in case. All right, tip number 26 is helpful because we have this in-display fingerprint reader. While it's a technological achievement, it's not as accurate as the version that was a physical, actual capacitive button. So one way to make that a little bit easier for you, less frustrating, is if you go to your settings and click on biometrics and security, and then add your fingerprint a few more times. If you only use one hand, just register it for four fingerprints, and it has a lot of data there to really like make it work a little bit better. Now this is especially important to re-register your fingerprint if you have a screen protector or you take this one off because it's a, a little bit different. You've changed the context in which your fingerprint is being read. So make sure you do that. And then while you're at it, if you have a screen protector, go to display and choose the enable touch sensitivity one and it'll help it read it a little bit better, especially with that screen protector, like I mentioned. Now, if you want a suggestion for a screen protector, I like the white stone dome glass and uh, I have some affiliate links down below if you wanna pick those up. Those are my favorite and the only ones that I use. Now, now tip number 27 is really awesome and it's about how I record my screen. So right now I've moved over to the Samsung native screen recorder, which has some options here. You can add in the camera for the front facing camera there. If you want, you can draw on it and things like that and stop it, but there's not a ton of features there. So that's why I like to use AZ Screen Recorder. This one has way more options available. This is not sponsored by the way, but there's options for resolution. There's a frame rate, there's a bit rate. 
all these different things that are really helpful uh, and I think it provides a more robust screen recording option than the stock option. So those are my top 20 plus tips for the Samsung Galaxy S20, S20 Plus, and S20 Ultra. Do you have any other tips that I may have missed? Go ahead and leave some comments down below to help everyone out. And don't forget to join the This Is Tech Today community Discord chat server. We'd love to have you. And I would really appreciate it if you share this video with other people to really help them out. And don't forget to use that link down below in the description to get 5% off on the Samsung store. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video, especially for that giveaway. There's a big giveaway coming, so don't miss out. Thanks so much for watching This Is Tech Today, where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and in all things creative. Until next time.